Every time I sit down, it's time for the conversation. Joining me in studio, Colin Sleekhoff from Haki Jami, a group that is passionate about people's health, and they co-sponsored or they worked with InfoTrack Kenya on a survey on uh, the, just the general perception of Kenyans on UHC and the public health system in the country. Time for us to start our discussion. Collins, thank you for making time. Thank you very much, Andira. 69% of Kenyans are not aware of what UHC is. Is it that we've not done enough public awareness, or Kenyans cannot just relate with this beautiful, big models and imprints that the government is coming through with. Thank you very much, Ondiro. Um, first, let me introduce myself officially. My name is Colin Siliko. I work with an organization called the Economic and Social Rights Center, Hakijami. Um, but I'm also a member of uh, the People's Health Movement. Mm -hmm. um, the People's Health Movement is a network of grassroots activists, okay. um, professionals, and even civil society organizations mm -hmm. and community-based organizations who have a passion mm -hmm. and are interested in you know, working towards ensuring that um, the right to health under Article 431A of the Constitution is realized. Good. Especially for those who are unable to access it. Um, some people call them the marginalized or others would call them the, the underserved. Okay. Um, coming back to your question, um, and so the People's Health Movement essentially works to, you know, d uh, uh, to protect, to d uh, defend, promote, and track uh, the realization of the right to health mm -hmm. as articulated under Article uh, 43 of the Constitution. As you've mentioned. Yeah, it is important to also note that we have a Health Act 2017 that now, you know, realizes the right to health um, as a right. Mm -hmm. um, coming back to your question, um, there is a whole big discussion around, you know, universal health coverage. Okay. Um, and it's not a Kenyan discussion, it is a global discussion where we are saying, um, look, um, we need to provide health um, that is quality, um, that is affordable and accessible to everyone, um, including those who are underserved and those who are marginalized. I hear you, and Kenyans definitely need that care. Yes. But Kenyans are not aware of the model that the government is yes, presenting yes, to them. Yes, yes, yes. Um, 69 percent of Kenyans do not know about UHC, and that is what we got from the survey we did with InfoTrack. Mm -hmm. um, it is obviously annoying, it's not a good thing because then, um, so who are we doing it for if we don't know what we are doing? Um, I would say it is being um, implemented in four counties as a pilot yes. to start with. Um, this was started last year in December, mm -hmm. but it's a national discussion, it's not a county discussion essentially. And so in my view, as at now, we should be having quite a number of us, you know, knowing about this. If at all, it has, you know, the, the, the national interest. What, why do you think Kenyans are not aware of it? Um, because Kenyans are never involved in these discussions. Um, these discussions are crafted at the very top level of this country, the leadership of this country, mm -hmm. and then rolled down to Kenyans through TVs, radios, and any other media, you know, platforms that are able to get to Kenyans. Mm -hmm. But then the nitty gritties of what exactly this is, Kenyans have no idea of. I mean, Kenyans are also busy people. They're also doing other things other than, you know, just sitting on TV and listening to these kind of things. But um, it is critical that they know mm -hmm. what this is all about because at the end of the day, they're taxpayers and these monies that they, you know, it, they, the government collects from them is still going to be used to provide these services. Mm -hmm. So in my view, they should be aware and they should have interest in knowing what UHC is. Mm -hmm. I'll assume that they do not know as of now because essentially it is a pilot in four counties. Okay. And therefore there has not been a lot of, uh, you know, discussion and a and lot sensitization. of sensitization, you know, countrywide other than the, the, four, the four pilot counties. Now, speaking of the four pilot counties, uh, Isiolo, Nyeri, Machakos, yes. and Kisumu, yes. they've rolled it out. And I would like to hear what your thoughts are, because you guys did a survey, you went on the ground. Yes. The government says it's a major success. Yes. After one year, we were at the Medic uh, Expo, where the person who read the speech on behalf of Madam Cecily Karaoke said, after the one year, they intend to do a national rollout. Yes. Before we go to the national rollout, briefly paint for us a visual picture of how things are on the ground in the four counties, and is UHC ready for national rollout, judging from these four counties? Thank you very much. Um, that's a good question. Um, our survey indicated that um, averagely 42% um, of those who are, are registered, 42% of people in the four counties have registered. Yeah. Meaning hooping uh, around 58% uh, mm -hmm. yes. have not registered, right? That's over half. Um, that's over half. Um, 
then that beats the logic when you say um, it is a success and you still have a whooping for 58% that have not registered. It would have made sense to me if it was the other way around. Um, and the problem that we have here is that um, it's the same thing I'm alluding to. You do not you know, discuss these things with Kenyans from the grassroots, but then you decide it at the very top level, then bring it down to Kenyans. Mm -hmm. We do not know what you're bringing to us because this country, you get into anything and you're in problems the next day. And so sometimes it is, I think some Kenyans are taking it easy and they're, they're being careful in terms of how do they get into this and where do they stand. Right now, as we speak, um, I'm told it's free. Uh, you know, uh, you can go and get the services for free. Um, but I think we'll come to that mm -hmm. uh, and, and explain really if this is going to be the trajectory until yeah, the Yeah, we'll talk about funding. Yes, yes. But is it ready for national rollout? As it they is say? not. It is not. Because if it was, then one of the successes, in my view, then should be that we have 100% registration, 100% uptake, you know, from the counties uh, mm -hmm. that are being piloted. Um, if that's not the case, then what is the success? Okay. Two, um, as let us a week ago, we still had industrial action. I mean, nurses are complaining. Doctors are saying, look, we are not being paid. We are not, our environment, you know, in terms of where we work is bad. Mm -hmm. We are not going to continue working. Meaning people cannot access services because there is nobody to offer those services. How, okay. how is that a success? Mm -hmm. It is a problem, isn't it? Okay. Um, and we still have a problem where, uh, you know, patients are still saying, you go to a hospital, yes, you are diagnosed, but then you are sent outside the facility to go and get drugs outside that facility, meaning from a private, you know, sort of uh, uh, pharmacy. Yeah, we saw the um, statistics. Yes, 39 yes. and 37 percent yes, dissatisfied. Exactly. Meaning you still have to go deep into your pocket and pay mm -hmm. for the drugs. How is that a success? Okay. I mean, honestly, let's stop hoodwinking and, and, and lying to Kenyans. I want to bring the president into this part Please. of the conversation okay. because he was at the United Nations General Assembly and he spoke about the UHC and uh, this is what he had to say listening and then we can have this conversation and you can let us know what your take on what the president said is and okay. if you generally think that the model that Kenyans and the president is taking to implement the UHC is actually going to ensure that it becomes a success next year when it's rolled out in 2022 after a countrywide success. All Take right. a look. insurance package mm -hmm. reduces the cost and ensure that as many Kenyans as possible that is you get access to quality health care your take yes um first of all i have to appreciate that our president has the political will um and he has that zeal to ensure that kenyans then are able to access uh, you know um, quality health care mm -hmm. especially those who are marginalized those who are not able to pay for health care um the problem we have even as we speak in the first place, I work in the sector and as a civil society, you know, from the civil society perspective, but I've not seen anything called a package mm -hmm. as we speak today. What I know, there was a task force that was actually uh, put together to develop um, the package thing uh, in terms of, so at, at what amount do we access what kind of services? Um, they came up with something, but it was not allowed, it was not accepted by, you know, the wider stakeholders because mm -hmm. it was a bit controversial. Okay. And for information, when these discussions are being done, um, those who are supposed to be benefiting from these services from the grassroots are never involved okay. for information. So a task force sits in Nairobi, decides for a, a woman or a, a, or a man or a girl or a boy in, 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 in as far as, you know, a place in a, in a, in a, in a Siolo, um, or a place in Wamba, in, 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 you know, those four places in Lodwa. So you sit in Nairobi and decide for them what they should access as a package. So as at, as at now, we do not have a package. Secondly, um, the approach we are using to address healthcare in Kenya, in my view, is it's actually not primary per se, best, mm -hmm. no. If it was primary, then all efforts, all energies, all resources should be at the very low level of the cadre, okay. you know, from level two, three, four addressing those issues at that level where we are doing a lot of preventive, you know, medical health uh, provision, where we are doing a lot of educative and, and promotive. Right now, our focus is on curative. And for the reasons that all of us know is that curative then means 
huge money is involved yeah. because we need to get the machines, we need to get the experts, we need to get what. And for Kenyans, that's where the energy is, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. then we are able to get some money for ourselves. So in my view, unless then we change that model, let's go back to the primary focus. Mm -hmm. Let's focus on preventive medical health care. That is what Kenyans need. Mm -hmm. Kenyans do not want to end up in Kenyatta. You are sick, you know, you are suffering from malaria. From Kibera, for example, you are suffering from malaria. The first stop is Kenyatta National Hospital. It is a congested space. You go there for emergency health care, you die yeah. in an ambulance waiting outside. What kind of medical health care is that? So in my view, let's go back to the basics. Let's do what we call, you know, health care system strengthening. Let's do the basics. Let's first prepare our facilities at the very low cadre of, you know, the health care provision so that mm -hmm. then they are able to deal with, an, uh, you know, a number of uh, um, disease burdens. Mm -hmm. Before we escalate these cases to the national level, you know, at, at the referrals, we should have dealt with them uh, in a, in a, at that level first. Okay. So let's have a, a, a more robust and effective and operational system that is able to serve the needs of the people right from the level one to level six. And we need a system that is working because mm -hmm. our system is not working. The reason as to why you will end up in Kenyatta suffering from malaria is because the very low level primary health care has died, I mean, is dead. I mean, and there has also been conversation on uh, we are getting cases that can easily be treated yes. at the lowest level, yes. even cancer that is one of the biggest discussion right now. Yes. Honorable Gladys Wonga sat here and said, if we could do diagnosis, early diagnosis in Homer Bay, you could get treated in Homer Bay rather yes. than it escalating to stage four, mm -hmm. and then you have to go and wait to, in Kenyatta and then for an oncologist. India, isn't it? Yeah, and, and, and that's where the problem is. That is exactly our argument. As the people's health movement, you are saying, look, um, our disease burden is, is becoming a problem, and especially the, the non-communicable diseases as at now. Mm -hmm. cancer, cancer is now a killer, isn't it? In yes. Kenya, it's, it's, it's horrible. You, everyone knows that. Um, can we go back to the basics? Cancer should be diagnosed at the very, very low level for everyone, because cancer is not for the rich. Cancer yeah. can affect anyone, anyone. isn't it? True. It, it is a disease that affects anyone. So let's go back to the basics. Let's address these issues at the primary level. Mm -hmm. Let's educate people. Let's provide diagnosis at that level so that then if we are unable to treat it at that point, by the time we go to even to the level five, we treat it at mm -hmm. that point. We're able to deal with that disease at that point. But as at now, everyone knows if you are sick or you're suffering from cancer, where do you end up? Kenyatta. You go to Kenyatta National Hospital, the center is full. Yeah. I'm told... Um, if you go today, this is today, the 26th of September, September. 2019. Mm -hmm. You are next, um, you will be a patient to be seen or to use the machines in, in the same the same date next year. So by that time, you know how cancer operates. I mean, you don't get medication, it kills your cells. And then before we know it, you're almost gone. So um, let's then go back and say, um, for you, our UHC to work. Yeah. Let's go back to the basics. Let's go back to the basics. And I want to bring Dr. Amit Taker uh, briefly, but just before I bring him into this conversation, um, if UHC has to work, we have to pump in funds in there. Yes. We spend roughly 1.5% of our GDP and national budget in health, yet it should be at least 5% according to the World Health Organization. And this is one of just the reasons, yes, right now that we it's under the big four agenda, but a time will come when if it's a success, it has to stand alone. Then how do we ensure that we put enough funds? The NHIF has really also struggled with that. Sometimes your card cannot work and they tried even putting intervention that you can only swipe your card thrice and Kenyans war against it. So mm -hmm. let's listen in to what Dr. Amit said about funding and then we can continue with this conversation. Listen okay. in.
money for quality and quality for money. Mm -hmm. Your take. Um, first, let me give you just some information that I have. Um, mm -hmm. UHC must be financed by the public. That is one thing that you must know as we speak from uh, this end. And secondly, um, in the year 2019-2020, okay. that is the, the, the financial year for Kenya, mm -hmm. um, the government gave the Ministry of Health about 90 billion shillings, right, for health. 90 billion shillings, 54% of that amount goes into administration, mm -hmm. right? 54% goes into administration, meaning pay salaries, buy tea, and everything else that you need to do. In the Ministry in the of ministry, Health? In the Ministry of Health, right? Now, okay. um, if you do your, your, your analysis, we, we do this quite a lot. We work a lot with communities to help them participate in the budget making process at the county level. Mm -hmm. We do petitions to the counties. We do memorandums to the counties. We have done budget analysis and just looking at the trends. Mm -hmm. Most counties essentially allocate quite a good amount of money from their budgets to health. But the question is this, what, what do we have to show for that? That's the biggest question every Kenyan is asking because if today you walk to any facility, you still don't get medicine. Mm -hmm. Today, you walk into any facility, you will stay for four to five hours, trying, you know, waiting to be treated. So where has this money been going? I would agree with the Dr. Dr. Amit. Yes, that we need more financing. But the first thing you should have told us is that, are we able to first account for the little that we've gotten as a country? There, there is a, a big discussion in this country where everyone talks about capacity, capacity, you know, human resource capacity, financial capacity, and as the people's health movement, we have a different approach to this. What's your approach? In our view, um, the issue is not um, um, the issue is not that we lack capacity. No, the, it's not the capacity deficit. No, that's not the issue. The issue is the governance deficit, mm -hmm. and that is where what we are, we are the problem we are suffering from, because. If you go to a facility essentially and you find there are no drugs, it's a governance issue, it's not a capacity issue, essentially. If you go to a facility and it has no money, it's not a capacity, I mean to a facility and it has no money, it's not a capacity issue, it's a governance issue. Mm -hmm. First, work on the governance aspect of health, right? Governance for health. Just ensure that all systems are working. When you go to a facility and a nurse is busy doing her nails and you know you need some kind of treatment, it's still not a capacity issue, it's a governance issue. So. For us, the fact that financing is, a, is an issue, we don't look at it as, um, as a capacity issue, but then mm -hmm. as a governance issue. And our, 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 what we are saying is, can we first be able to effectively, efficiently utilize the resources that we have, put it in the right place, and see what the outcome would look like, mm -hmm. and then ask for more money. Okay, just just briefly, you've mentioned that the public will have to fund it, and maybe the viewer at home is curious, how what am I going mean? to fund it? Yes. What does that mean? This is the thing. Um, as at now, for information, the, you, the, the, the current pilot UHC program is financed from outside this country. Yes. I mean, it's not financed by the government of mm -hmm. Kenya. And it is a pilot, mm -hmm. meaning we are just trying to test the waters and see what happens. Where However, when the full rollout exactly. comes. Exactly. So what is happening is that 76% of those who are interviewed said, they went for those, uh, you know, for the services and registered for UHC because it's it's free. free. So the, the, it means then that the pushing factor that led them to go and register is that I'll get free services, yes. which is fine. Mm -hmm. But from where I sit, um, this is not going to be the trend when we then begin to implement the full, you know, uh, when we begin to implement fully in, in other counties. Yeah, 61% said cost will be a determining factor. Yes, yes. So um, what I'm looking at is, when we now introduce the packages, because right now we don't have any package mm -hmm. that we're working with as we speak today. You go to hospital, you'll get what you'll get and go home yeah. and don't pay. Mm -hmm. So when we introduce the packages, most definitely they must be accompanied by a cost, essentially. It's not for free. Mm -hmm. What we are saying is universal health care is not, it's not for free. I think people need to get this right. What, what, what's happening is that um, universal health coverage does three very essential things. Go ahead. One is supposed to provide what we call quality, quality. health care mm -hmm. to everyone. Two. You know. Two, it is supposed to address what we call um, you know, to shield you from financial constraints mm -hmm. anytime you suffer from a disease. And finally. And three is that it is supposed to ensure that you are able to access um, medical services at any given point 
in time. So how will the government raise funds? We are just interested very briefly. What are some of the means that the government will use to raise funds? And that is now what the government needs to tell the public. Okay. That is what the government needs to tell the public. Um, the hoodwinking, the lies, and everything that is going on that universal health care uh, is, is going to be free, it's a lie. Mm -hmm. Let's be very honest with each other. It cannot be free. Well, speaking of the public, we want to bring you into this conversation because you're very important and we have this conversation because of you. We went out in the streets of Nairobi mm. and we wanted to hear what's your take. We, we are always talking about UHC, NHIF, medical health insurance, yes. but what's your standpoint? Do you even feel the need? Do you have medical health insurance? What's your perception of public health in this country? Take a look. Mm -hmm. Sababu ni metumia akronimu wata hajui ni nini iyo. I mean, yeah, big that, four. That, that is the whole and we are constantly talking about it. That Let's just address story. briefly some of the concerns that Kenyans have raised. Mm -hmm. Miu cash. I don't fall sick every day. Why should I pay for it? Mm. They don't like services in public hospital. They'd rather go to private hospital. Mm -hmm. What is, is happening in the health sector? There is a whole wrong narrative that private hospitals or rather private sector provides better services than the public sector. But that is the Kenyan speaking I, to I you know, in the I know, I know, that is what I'm saying. It is a wrong narrative that you need to demystify and actually um, do Go ahead and Kenyans, demystify um, it. I mean, as taxpayers, honestly, um, if you go to a facility and mm -hmm. you realize that what the kind of services they are offering are actually poor, yeah. you need to speak out as a Kenyan. And, and nowadays, the, Where, the, constitution, to whom? the constitution gives every other Kenyan a lot of space to talk about some of these things. Mm -hmm. We have so many civil society organizations outside there. You can do a letter. You can talk to the president if you want. I mean, Kenyans are, you are do, so you, passive. you just said it yourself that yes. if you go to Kenyatta today, cancer, 26th of September next year, yes. what stops me from doing a harambe to go to India to try and save my life? And that is that is what we are saying. Um, we have a problem, and we agree there is a problem. Mm -hmm. But who has the solution? It question, is the, it question, is the same question. as. It is the same as. I mean, we've given our government so much space to do whatever they want to do with our money, with our taxes. I mean, they decide for us. They went to look at the, the kind of PPPs they go into, you know, private, public private partnership they go into. Look at the, the machines they bought. Were they really, did we really want the machines anyway in the first place? Um, are we even equipped with the right people to handle the machines? They are not functioning for information. They were, they were, they were given out to around 98 facilities. Mm -hmm. um, quite a number of them are not actually working. In fact, very soon we want to take a look at some of the facilities just to understand are these machines working and if yes, who is benefiting from mm -hmm. these machines. So um, I would agree with Kenyans there is a problem. Okay. But Kenyans must also come out and speak to out. be part of the solution 
and speak out about some of these issues. Well, um, um, just hold on to that thought because we also mentioned NHIF and uh, we have a call from one, uh, somebody from the NHIF, Jared Osoro, I believe, to just try and clarify some of those issues that were raised. Are we ready with the call yet? Okay, there you have it. Listen in and then we'll pick up this conversation after the call. Okay. Well, okay, what's your takeaway from I, that? I like, I like what he's saying, um, that is about pulling resources together, then be able to provide, you know, affordable, accessible, and quality health care. Mm -hmm. But who gets it? He should be able to answer you who gets it. Um, because as far as we are concerned, we know um, that NHIF is inaccessible for quite a good number of Kenyans because they cannot pay the, you know, the, the subscription. Yeah. But when he says it's about pulling together resources, um, meaning he's going to get subscriptions the, from essentially the formal sector, those yes. who are employed. There are those who are not employed. Where are they? He needs to answer that and question. And they are the majority they of are the majority. Kenyans. They are the majority of Kenyans. And in, essentially they are the ones who suffer from a lot of diseases, yes. isn't it? Yeah. Because these guys in the formal sector would go for the private insurance. Hospitals. They never go to this, you know. They are forced to pay by NHIF, but they never use it. Yes. Isn't it? Most of the time your employer yes. has insured you. Yes. Most of them do not use it. Now... Let him tell us what strategies has he put in place to ensure that those who are not in the formal sector, you know, those who are underserved, they are marginalized, they don't have the money because of economic status, they need to balance between buying food, water, paying rent, and getting medical access. Where are they in, in this discourse? NHIF at Metropole TVKE, Arsene Duranga, hashtag Metropole Debrief. Question, when an answer? So, um, another thing is, uh, he says, um, he says that, uh, you know, I, I, he says he's pulling together resources. But then the second thing that he's not telling us as well is what is the difference between NHIF and UHC? Mm -hmm. You see, is NHIF UHC? The answer should be no. Those are just two different things. Okay. Be, um, and for him, he's putting NHIF to be UHC. Mm -hmm. And that is something that they need to come out and tell Kenyans whether it's one and the same thing okay. or not. Now, we can sit here. And we can have this conversation yes. the whole night and we won't finish because health is a really passionate topic and it affects every single Kenyan. Yes. However, the government looks like it's committed. The president in front of the whole mm -hmm. world at the United Nations General Assembly is just saying that by 2022, he hopes for a successful rollout of UHC. If this thing is to work, and it has worked in other countries, yes. it has. Yes. What do Kenya and Kenyans need to do different? Thank you. That's, that's a very good question. Now, um, I would go back to what I said earlier. You do not implement um, a program from the top. Okay. You need to go back to the basics. Mm -hmm. You never build a house from the top. Mm -hmm. You start by developing a foundation, isn't it? Um, the best approach to UHC is by strengthening U um, PHC, that is primary health care. Mm -hmm. That is the, big, the, the starting point. Secondly, is for you to be able to look at what works for you in terms of financing. Okay. Because that is the biggest issue in terms of, so where do we get resources to implement, you know, these kind of programs. Um, so it is, it is good for the government to actually put uh, enough resources on UHC because it's essentially about protecting Kenyans from suffering, uh, you know, financial constraints when uh, uh, the strategy of disease strikes. So can we find a, a mechanism to address that issue? Um, thirdly is the issue of inclusivity. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do not want to hear people talk about NHIF and UHC in the same conversation. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. We need to demarcate the two mm -hmm. and separate them as far as we can. Okay. So that then UHC is about ensuring that everyone, mm -hmm. everyone is included in discussions around health, okay. access, mm -hmm. and coverage. Okay. Now, we want to hold on to that thought. We are not done, but this segment is done mm -hmm. because when we come back, we want to bring in our people into the conversation. Okay. We went in social media and we asked you what your take is. You've been tweeting us, you've been texting us, you've been sending us messages on WhatsApp and Instagram. And after the break, we'll be crossing over to social watch and you know what we say when we go to that place. My mic goes off 
and your voice comes on. Keep tweeting. It's about time.